Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Elden Ring. This is a live recording guide, so I'm not editing this in any way. We're just going to record and upload. Uh, I've been getting a question over and over, how do you get to Nokron? And so that's what this video is for. Um, Nokron and a couple other places. I want to say off the bat that my boss guides, the way I make them is I assume that somebody has engaged the boss, is struggling, and needs help. So they already know how to get there. But, as I understand it now, people just like to watch these boss fights. And then the other thing <laughs> is that this is a huge game with tons of optional content. And so it's not always clear where these bosses are, how you get there, and I understand that now. So going forward, I'm going to be putting the location of bosses in my guides. But for these ones in Nokron, I still didn't put it in there for good reason. This area is very difficult to describe how to get to quickly. So that's what this video is for. It's a com companion piece because this is a giant open world game. Okay, spoiler warnings abound. Spoilers abound. You are, you've been warned. We're going to spoil some big things. Here we go. The first thing you have to do is you need to challenge and defeat General Radon. He's one of the demigods. He's located here in Redmain Castle in Kaelid. There is a trigger to get... Radon to accept your challenge it's unclear what that is I think it's a number you need to defeat a certain number of bosses it can be any kind of bosses a friend of mine defeated Godric and then a whole bunch of other stuff but never challenged a demigod again he did not do Royal Academy of Rey Lucaria he did not or Academy of Rey Lucaria he didn't do Volcano Manor nothing he did Godric a bunch of side stuff challenge Radon so it's unclear what the trigger is but I have been told by several people but that the festival has not begun when they reach Redman Castle, and they can't challenge Radon. So go kill more bosses. That's really the only advice I have right now. Okay, so once you defeat Radon, the stars in the sky, which there are none right now because it's cloudy, the stars in the sky will begin moving again. When that happens, one of them will crash into Limgrave and reveal the entrance to Nokron. The entrance is in the Mistwood, where you first met Blythe. It's possible that the Blythe questline is the trigger, but I don't know. Okay, so I'll show you how to get into Nokron, and then I'll explain things as we go. I am going to show the entire area, because it's there's a lot of different side areas, and there's a hidden path to get to the main place, so it's a little weird. But I will be using warps just to make things move faster. So you want to ride along this path, and then we'll be able to drop down... Down, 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 down. And then you're just going to drop right here. And then you're going to jump. And then you're going to jump one more time. And there's going to be a curious looking cave entrance. Dismount torrent. And then we're going to drop down a little bit further. And then a little further still. And then we're going to jump through this little hole. And here we are. Nokron, Eternal City. Cool. So you're going to adventure through this area. It's somewhat linear. You just go straight into that little courtyard you see in the distance and move on. And then eventually you're going to fight your first boss, which is the Mimic Tier. So that's where we're going to warp. The Mimic Tier is an interesting fight. If you need help on it, uh, just check the description below for a guide link. Okay. After you defeat the Mimic Tier, you will now have access to this bridge. And you can summon Torrent once more. So, if all this looks familiar, and it probably should by this point, this is right above Shifra River. So, Nokron is basically attached to Shifra. Blythe was right. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. If you're wondering how to get over here, I don't know yet. have no idea. I assume you can go there, but I don't know yet. Um, it's not part of this guide. I, I don't know it yet. So, you'll notice in the distance there is a big throne with a corpse on top. It's a very important throne. I'll show you how to get to that area. Um, it is required to get there for uh, one of the endings, as well as to access a completely separate area of the underground. That'll be another video, though. Okay, so we're going to ride along here, and then we're going to dip into these woods. And then, just like in Chiefer River, there are some obelisks with braziers that you can light. There's six in total this time, not eight, and they're much easier to light this time. Um, but you can light all six and fight an optional boss if you like, although... I'm pretty sure all of this is optional anyway. 
Most importantly, though, we're going to ride up here near the singing woman. And there's another side of grace. I'll rest here just to reset everybody because I was getting shot at. Okay, so from here, you can jump off this ledge and onto that roof right there. And then you will be in a place called Noxstella. And you can explore this area and it will eventually lead down to that throne, which contains a key item required for Ronnie's quest line, as well as um, another thing. So <laughs> down here in Nakron, there's a lot of interconnected quest lines. Uh, two of them, at least that I know so far, have to do with secret endings to the game. I think I have access to both. I'm unclear how the game ends. If it's like Dark Souls 3, where you can like do all the quests and just choose one, um, you know, choose an ending at the end if you have them all unlocked. I don't know if it works like that. I think it might, just based on the dialogue that everybody's saying. Um, but I haven't gotten that far yet. I mean, you know, half my map is still blank up here. I'm, I'm nowhere close yet. Um, so go through Noxtella, and then you're going to get a key item from the chest inside of this throne. Bring that key item to Ronnie, and then she will give you um, another key item, which gives you access to the Divine Tower of, Ray of Lyernia, Divine Tower of Lyernia. I have a, a full walkthrough for this whole quest chain linked in the description below. And the reason I'm even bringing this up is because at the end of this area that we're going to go through in this video, you need the key item from the Divine Tower in order to fight a boss. So really important that you do that whole quest line and then, you know, come back here. <laughs> so all right, we're going to go through here. And then this is going to go to the next part of Nakron. So there's a hollow horn grounds here, and again, light the six braziers to challenge another boss. Really fun fight, but we can ride through here into these woods, and then once you see the jellyfish, you'll know you're heading in the right direction. Jellyfish don't always mean the right direction, but in this case, they do. So thank you, jellyfish. All right, so now we can ride off of this cliff down here into a cave. And then there's another side of grace here, which is lovely. And then you don't have to at this point, but you can dismount torrent, and I actually recommend doing it. Because once you land on this rafter here, torrent will dismount. So you may get kicked off the rafter if you're still on them. All right, so we can drop in here into this into the Shifra Aqueduct. Down this pathway, there will be a Crucible Knight. You can kill that one. And then up on top of this waterfall, there will be a Crucible Knight as well. You fight them individually. You don't have to fight them 2v2. Or 2v1, rather. Okay. So we're going to come in here and then walk through here. Don't forget to walk behind the waterfall. Always exciting. Okay. And then we're going to come through here. And then sitting here is going to be an NPC. And if you've been following the quest line for Thea, Deathbed Companion, and D, Hunter of the Dead, you will have come into possession of the armor that D wears. You'll have a set of it. If you have it in your inventory and no alterations have been made to it, like no uh, cosmetic alterations have been made to it, then you can give it to the NPC and that'll progress this NPC's quest line. However, I don't recommend doing it just yet because it interacts with Fia's quest line and will cut it short and then you won't be able to access the other ending. So don't do it just yet. Okay. Cool. So we're going to come up here, and then you're going to fight a boss. This is the Valiant Gargoyles boss. Um, if you need help with that, check the description for a guide. And I'm literally just going to warp to the other end of this room because it's so big. <laughs> it's huge. So this is actually uh, right underneath us, where we are right now, which is interesting. Or sort of underneath us. Okay, so at the end of the Gargoyle boss room, see how long it is? There is a coffin. Get in the coffin because we learned nothing from our time in Lordran and Dark Souls 1. And then you're able to come up here to an area called Deepest Depths. So now we're up here. Deep Root Depths. Sorry. I always mess that up. This is Deep Root Depths. This is where we just came from. This was Shifra and Nakron and Noxtella. Again, I think there's something else over here. Just because the banner does not have a name yet, which indicates to me that there's something else over here that will then complete it. Don't worry about Ainsel River. That's something for another time. Completely separate guide. That's way more in-depth. But for now, we can move through here in Deep Root Depths. And so there is going to be an Erd Tree avatar for you to kill. It's a kill once enemy, so just go ahead and take care of it. And then the object here, or the mission here, is to roll along these tree roots. 
Uh, there's two sets of roots. The one that I'm facing right now in the distance, this one leads into a heavily uh, guarded cave with a lot of enemies, but a lot of really good treasure. So you can follow that and do that. But I'm going to follow the critical path here. And then we're going to ride along this route, drop off here, ride along this one. And then you just follow this path, and then you'll find another side of grace, which is the deep root depths side of grace. I'm just going to warp there because it's faster than riding. This PS5 load times are great. So yeah, you see we're on the other side of those flying ants. So that's all we did. And so we're going to ride through here now. And this is sort of like the last area of this video that we're going to cover. So in this area, there's going to be a lot of basilisks to uh, take care of. There's going to be some uh, spirit enemies that are associated with a mausoleum that's in the area. Uh, so I'll tell you how to take down the mausoleum. Uh, which gets rid of all the spirit enemies as well. Uh, so we're going to ride through here, and there's going to be a site of grace here. You can rest there. Okay, so the mausoleum in question is in the distance over there. It's the third building out there. Uh, the way to get there, I'll show you now, is you got to jump on top of it from tree roots. I'll show you how to start that. And I'll also show you the location of another boss. It's a field boss, so you can use torrent if you'd like. Although I, I kind of don't recommend it. Better off just fighting it on foot. Take this wind shaft up here, and then the field boss will be right here with all these blood stains. It's another crucible night, but pretty hard. Um, so take that down, and then to get to the mausoleum, you want to ride the tree roots here. Um, not sure which one is which, but you want to find the path and then ride it into the distance and then jump down onto the mausoleum. It's uh, heavily guarded by basilisks, though, so be careful. Basilisks do... Uh, build up instant death, which is not good. It's this game's version of Curse. Luckily, it doesn't cut your health in half or anything, but you die instantaneously, no matter what your health bar is at. Okay, so to reach the final, final section, you want to come back into the ruined town here. Jump on this roof. Jump on this roof. And there's going to be some uh, gargoyle statues here that breathe perfume that explodes. So it's basically fire, but it comes out as perfume. Um, which is interesting. But since we are encountering, like, we're aggroing them for the first time, we're able to ride past everything. But if they're already going, you got to take the long way. You're going to jump onto this route and then follow it up. And then we're going to drop down to this side of grace right here. And then we automatically get dismounted. Okay. We are not going to go any further than this. Reason being, the, um, the room past these tree roots is really important. There's actually two bosses in there. When you go in, you'll fight the first boss, that is Fia's Champions. There is a video, to, a link in the video description for that boss. Although, frankly, as of this moment in particular, it's rendering. So it won't be there when this is uploaded, but it'll be there tomorrow. Um, and then after you defeat Fia's Champion, uh, you can warp to a new area and go further in the game. But the thing I want to mention is that after you defeat Fia's Champions, you'll be able to speak with Fia once again. And if you've been following her quest line and you gave the broken gold dagger to D, Hunter of the Dead, and, you know, move that on, and then she left the round table hold, she should appear here again. You can speak with her, and then she will assume that you're going to be antagonistic towards her. Just be friendly, and you can actually progress her quest line. To progress her quest line even further than that, however, you will need a key item from the Divine Tower of Liernia, like I mentioned before. I have that guide done and uploaded. It's linked in the description below. It involves Ronnie the Witch, Blythe the Half-Wolf, the, the Half-Wolven Warrior, I think his name is, um, and Celevis and Selen, and a bunch of other people. Um, and at the end of that quest line, at the end of the Divine Tower, or in the Divine Tower, you'll get a key item. And you want to bring that key item to Fia here. And if you do and you give it to her, you gain access to another boss fight, which is a really cool boss. And then... After you defeat that boss, you get another key item from Fia that I think gives you access to another ending. So, we're going to end it here, but there's a bunch of bosses that I've uploaded guides for that folks have no idea how to get to. Everybody's asking how to get to Nokron. Here it is. Uh, there are other sections of this sort of underground. Like I said, there's Ainsel River. That's another video for another time. But you do get there by completing the quest with Ronnie the Witch 
getting to the Divine Tower of Liernia. So, I'm not kidding. This is all connected. Like, this, all these quests are connected and lead to these underground areas. So watch that video on the Divine Tower of Liernia. Complete that quest, and then it'll give you access to the third tower. It'll unlock Rena's Rise. At the top of Rena's Rise, there is a teleport to Ainsel River. And then you can complete all this. So that's how you get to Ainsel River. Follow that guide for Divine Tower of Liernia. And you got it. And again, that covers all the specifics here in Shifra. And that's it. Oh, my God. No joke. I've recorded this guide four times, and I've made dumb mistakes every single time. I had my, my mic muted. I had it recording as a separate MP3. And I had my mic muted again. Hopefully, this is it. Uh, since this is a live recording, I want to give a personal shout-out to my channel members. This way, uh, just because I'm not going to be rolling credits on this, because it's not edited. Um, ooh, cool. All right, so we have John Aldridge with 22 months. Tammy Skinner with 21. Hector J. Estrada with 10. Uh, or 9 months, sorry. He just joined again 10 days ago. Thank you, Hector. Joe Saunders with 9 months. Daniel Cockrell with 4 months. Brian Brubaker with 2 months. Spencer Young with 2. And Charles Jam with 26 days. If you would like to support this channel with your hard-earned dollars, you can click the blue join button below and become a channel member. If you're looking for more guides for Elden Ring, subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when you guys go live. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. Links for both of those are in the description below. And as always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.